Okay, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Natasha and I'm the Maasai UK representative. Maasai has reps all across the world and there's two of us in the UK. Before I begin the quiz, I'm just going to give a little bit of a history of pub quizzes and um, origins and how they relate to British culture. So pub quizzes were established in the 1970s by a business in the UK called Burns and Porter and they prepared and distributed pub quizzes um, in 32 pubs across the country in southern England um, and now pub quizzes are played in like under four, about 40% of British pubs across the country and um, typically held weekly. It's a fun um, activity that British people do usually of an evening and usually involves drinking and um, people go in groups and teams but today you're going to be your own team. So it's on a website called Kahoot. Before we begin, these are the rules. So if any of you have any questions about the, the answers being correct, the rule for the pub quiz is that the quiz master, which is me, um, is always correct. So there you go. Um, so it'll be on Kahoot. So if you type in kahoot.com or just Kahoot into the Google browser, it will be the second down, which should look like this. And you'll want to enter your pin in. So I'm going to get the pin. So if you type in Kahoot, then it will come up with a little pin here. So if you just type in your name, I'll wait for all your names to pop up on the screen here. If any of you have any questions, just unmute yourself. Um, and I'll help. Okay, I can see Elena's in. Two more of you to go. Oh. Okay. Let's begin. Okay. Question number one, what is the most expensive street on the Televir version of Monopoly? Okay, so the answer is Diesenbach Street. One of you um, got it wrong and you put Rothschild Boulevard and one of you put, the rest of you put Diesenbach. So Guy, you're winning so far. Okay, next question. How many individual beaches are there in Tel Aviv? Okay, so the correct answer is 50, which seems crazy, but if you start thinking in your mind that like small individual beaches like Jerusalem Beach and you walk two seconds up and then the next beach, um, so there are 50 individual beaches just in Tel Aviv alone. Okay. Well done, Guy, you're winning. Okay, question number three. Where is the only kosher McDonald's in the world outside of Israel? <laughs> Buenos Aires, Argentina. It was established in 1997 in Abasto Mall, which is one of the, in a shopping mall in one of the traditionally Jewish districts. And the mall has also two additional McDonald's that are not kosher. So very interesting. 
Guy, you're on a streak with three correct answers. Well done. Okay. What was the original flavor of Bamba crisps or Bamba flavored snack? Cheese, the correct answer is cheese. So Bamba makes up 25% of the Israeli snack market and was first produced in 1964 with a cheese flavor and then replaced two years later in 1966 with a peanut flavor. Okay. How many women signed the Israeli Declaration of Independence? Okay, well done. Everyone got it right. Does anyone know who the two women are? I do. Yep. Should I answer? Yep. One was Gilda Meir. Yep. And one was Rachel Cohen Kagan. Correct. Well done. So Rachel Kagan was a, a Zionist activist and Israeli politician, and Gilda Meir was the fourth um, Prime Minister of Israel, and obviously the only female Prime Minister of Israel. Okay. Can you see this score? Okay, next question. In which sport has Israel won an Olympic gold medal? Okay, so the correct answer is windsurfing and it was won in 2004 by Gal Friedman. He became Israel's first and only gold medalist in windsurfing, in men's windsurfing. And he also won a bronze in 1996. So he's Israel's only multi-medalist. So he's the only um, Olympian who has more than one medal. Okay, this is a score, everyone. Next question. What is the international dialing code, dialing code for Israel? Well done, everyone. So in 1965, many Israelis had six digit phone numbers and there were 10 area codes across the country. And now if you want to call Israel from um, an international country, you'll dial plus nine, uh, nine, seven, two. Okay. Next question. What was the first, uh, who was the first Israeli woman to win a Nobel Prize? Uh, we see three evenly split answers and I feel like I, I specifically chose certain people here to trick you. So um, Ada Yonath is an Israeli crystal photographer and in 2009 she received a Nobel Prize in chemistry for her studies on the structure and function of the rib ribosome. She's the only Israeli woman to win a Nobel Prize out of 10 Israelis total and she's the first woman from the Middle East to win a Nobel Prize in science and the first woman to win in 45 years in the field of chemistry. So what an incredible woman. Okay, next question. How many people use Waze on a monthly active basis? One hundred and thirty million. Waze was launched in two thousand seven by Ehud Shabtai. The Waze headquarters are now in Palo Alto, California, and the parent company is Google. Google purchased Waze for one point one five billion, and as of the fifth of Feb, Waze had one hundred and thirty million monthly active users in one hundred eighty five countries. So, don't know about you, but whenever I get in an Uber, they're always using Waze. Um, in their taxis. Okay. So it seems that we have Guy in first place, Yoni in second place, and Elena in third place. Okay. How many earthquake aid personnel did Israel send to the earthquake in Nepal in 2015? 
Ooh, none of you got that one. Um, 260. Uh, the April 2015 Nepal earthquake had a magnitude of 7.8 megawatts and killed 9,000 people and injured 22,000 people. The IDF search and rescue team were deployed and helped locate survivors and a field hospital was set up to provide medical services. Okay, next question. Who was the first mayor of Tel Aviv? Well done, Mayor Dizengov. He became the head of town planning in 1911 for Tel Aviv. And when Tel Aviv was recognized as a city, he was elected mayor and he remained in office until his death. And Dizengov Street in Tel Aviv is named after the mayor. Okay. What was the who? What was the idea? Who was the IDF chief of staff during the Suez crisis? It should be not what. Okay. Moshe Dayan. Um, the Suez crisis in 1956 was an international crisis in the Middle East. In July 1956, Dayan became chief of staff in 1953 and led the Israeli army to invade Egypt. Okay, what was the year of the first Aliyah? Okay. 1881 was the first major wave of Zionist immigration and um, between 1881 and 1903. The Jews who, em who migrated were mostly Eastern European and from Yemen and it was estimated that 250 to 35,000 Jews emigrated. Okay, next question. How many times has Israel won the Eurovision Song Contest? Oof. Four times. Does anyone know? So whoever put four times, if you want to tell everyone, if you think you know all the four times, does anyone know? No? So Paris, 1978. Jerusalem, 1979. Birmingham, 1999. And Lisbon, obviously with Netta, as we can see in the background here, in 2018. So four times. Oh, it's getting a bit closer now. Okay. How many UNESCO World Heritage Sites are there in Israel? So there are nine. Some of them in, that you may be familiar with include the Baha'i Gardens, Masada, the old city of Akko, um, and there are many others as well. Oof, guy, look at your score there, very good. Which former Mossad director was born in London? Okay, Ephraim Halevi um, was the ninth director of Mossad and he was born in London to an Orthodox family and he emigrated to Israel in 1948. And the others are other Mossad directors who were Israeli. <clears throat> well done, Eleanor. What year did Fowder season one premiere on Netflix? December 2016, Fowder, an Israeli television series developed by the main character, Lior Raz, focuses on the experiences of soldiers in the Israeli Defense Force, and it first premiered on Netflix in December 2016. For those of you who watch it, Series 3 is coming out on April 16th, so that will be a brilliant show to binge watch um, whilst we're all stuck at home. Okay. And what is the national bird of Israel? Hmm. The hoop 
Hoopi. The Hoopi was chosen as the national bird of the State of Israel in May 2008 in conjunction with Israel's 60th anniversary. The other birds are birds that are national to other countries. So the robin is the British bird. Um, I believe one of them is a German bird. Um, I can't remember which one I picked. Um, and another European country's national bird as well. Okay. Um, what is Israel's fourth largest city? Haifa, Rishon Lezion, Ashdod, or Cholon? Okay, Ashdod. So obviously the first being Tel Aviv, um, Jerusalem, and then Haifa. The fourth, I thought it was a bit obvious to do the first, second, or third, but Ashdod is the third. The other, um, Rishon and Cholon, I believe, are fourth and fifth, but I can't remember which way around. Well done, Eleanor. True or false, Israeli cows produce more milk per cow than almost any country in the world. True, I think it was a bit of an obvious one here, but I just wanted to highlight how amazing this fact is. So Israeli cows have the largest milk yield in the world, um, on average 10,500 litres a year compared to 9,500 litres per cow in the United States and 7,500 litres per cow in Europe. So it's just a cool fact to know about the Israeli milk industry. <clears throat> True or false, Google has more employees in Israel than it does per capita anywhere in the world. <clears throat> I can trick you there twice. Um, false, however, Microsoft has more employees in Israel than anywhere else in the world. Um, Google does have an office in Tel Aviv, but Microsoft is the one. Okay. True or false, Israeli banknotes have Braille on them. <laughs> okay, true. Um, Israeli banknotes have braille on them. This is to help the visually impaired um, be able to read their banknotes. <clears throat> so it's getting closer now. Okay, 22. Roughly how many kibbutzim are in Israel? Two hundred and seventy. So a kibbutz is a collective community in Israel traditionally based in agriculture. The first kibbutz was established in 1909 called Deganya in northern Israel and now there are roughly 270 um, across Israel mainly in the north. Well done Guy. True or false, Israel has the highest number of museums per capita in the world. True. Um, with more than 200 museums, Israel has the highest number of museums per capita in the world and Tel Aviv um, has three of the largest in the country. That picture that you would have seen, you can see here, is I believe it's one of the art museums that um, is in Israel. I haven't actually been to this one, but the architecture is just amazing. Well done. Okay, what position is Israel's ranking in the world for their GDP? Okay, um, so gross domestic product is a market value for all final goods and services from a nation in a given year. Countries are sorted by nominal GDP estimates from a financial and statistical uh, year which are calculated at market or government official exchange rates and Israel's GDP as of when I made this quiz a few days ago was 400 billion. So number 31 in the world rankings. Okay. 
how many number one songs have Static and Banal Tavori had in the Israeli music charts? One person got it right, the correct answer is 11. Um, I put this question in because they're my second favorite Israeli artist, obviously Omar Adam number one. Um, so Israeli pop duo Static and Banal Tavori have been together since 2015. Their first single, Barbie, came out in 2015. <clears throat> since then, they have released 17 singles, um, 11 of which hit number one in the Israeli charts. And in 2018, they signed a $5 million deal with Capitol Records, which is an American company. Um, they've had artists such as J-Lo, Katy Perry, The Beatles and Queen. So it's a pretty amazing deal that they have. Um, and since then, they've released a song, I think, with Pitbull, um, like a half Israeli, half English song, which is pretty cool for them. And I know that they're trying to break the Latin and American market at the moment. Oh, it says you're on fire. Okay. Where did Tel Aviv rank in a 2019 survey for the world's most expensive cities to live? <laughs> okay, so the correct answer is 10th. Number one on the rankings was a tie between Hong Kong, Singapore and Paris. Tel Aviv ranked um, also tied with Los Angeles. And Israel was the only Middle Eastern country that was even ranked on the survey. So um, as I'm sure you're aware, obviously Tel Aviv is an extremely expensive place to live. House prices are similar, if not more expensive than London and other um, expensive European or American cities. And they are 10th most expensive in the world. So that's a great um, thing to have. Well done, Yoni. Israel was the first country in the world to ban this. Underweight models. So I picked a range of things that are banned in countries across the world. So rough diamonds are banned in the UK. Kinder eggs are banned in America. Medical cannabis is also banned in Israel at the moment, but I've read in the news that there's a discussion to legalize this. In 2012, the government passed a law that bans advertisers from showing models with a body mass index of less than 18.5, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so they've banned the use of underweight models in their advertising. Oh. Yoni, you've just overtaken. Ooh, you've had that lead the whole time. Let's see if you can rein it back in for the last two questions. How much honey do Israelis consume in total for the Jewish New Year Rosh Hashanah? Um, nobody got it right. <laughs> 1,600 tons. Israel's 100,000 commercial hives produce an average of 3,500 tons of honey per year, of which some 1,600 tons of honey are eaten every year for the Jewish New Year. So fun fact for you there. Nobody got that one right. So it's really a tie now for the final question to see who's going to win. More than 60% of Israel's fresh vegetable exports come from which area of Israel? Nobody got it right. <laughs> the Arava Desert. The desert is blooming as more than 550 farms grow fresh vegetables in the Arava Desert, a 112 mile strip of arid land stretching from the Dead Sea to the Red Sea. Um, so it's a bit of a trick one there. So here we have the results. Third place, Elena, well done. Second place, Guy. And first place, Yoni, well done. Okay, another one. So I also have another Thing that you guys can do. It's um, guess the emoji. So I'm going to give you 
five minutes um, to guess these two emojis. There are three of them on the top and three on the bottom. They both um, are Israeli, famous Israelis. Um, so have a guess as to who you think they are. I'll give you five minutes. So the first three emojis, the car, the woman with the black hair and the superwoman are three and they represent one person and then the chef, British flag and books represent another person. So have a think about who you think they could be. And if you want to say in five minutes time or a few minutes. <laughs> you look very confused there. Take yourself off mute, Yon. Yeah, you can take yourselves off Why? mute as well. While I'm you. We have to discuss it. Hmm. I've got feelings about the second one. Could it be like the flag represents their nationality as opposed to being part of their name? Well, they're, they're Israeli, all of them. The, the flag, maybe dual nationality or... I think the second one's Ottolenghi. Mm. Mm. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Is he, is he dual nationality British? I'm not sure about that, but he does live here. You know how I think the top one is? Who? Netta? No, nah, Gal Gadot. Online, Kahoot. I don't know what the car is. Okay. Think, got... Oh, yeah, superhero. And then it just looks like Gal Gadot in the third one. It does look a bit like Gal Gadot, but what's the car for? I don't know. <laughs> Car. Uh, car. Is a red car, is that significant? Um, the red car. Mm. Hmm. One of the women. <laughs> hmm? Is the red car. Um. Yeah, so who do you think the second one is? Yot, um, Ottolenghi. Yeah, so the second one's Ottolenghi. So he's um, dual uh, nationality. He's um, British Israeli. Um, I can't remember if he was born here or if his parents are British. Um, so there's the chef and then his books, which represent his cookbooks. Oh. And the first one. I reckon Gal Gadot, but I don't know what the middle clue is. Yeah, so it's Gal Gadot. Um, so she was in the Fast and the Furious movies. That's why. Uh, uh... And then obviously the woman represents um, Wonder Woman and then the brown ha the black hair to try and make it obvious and then there's two more I... here you go uh. oh uh Natalie Portman yeah what dickhead I mean <laughs> sorry <laughs> well you've got the ballet slippers from the black swan that's why there's a swan uh, and she's American and then she obviously lives in America now and then the second one. Well done. Uh, Netta, so you've got the toy um, representing her song Toy and the microphone for her singing and then the European flag for Eurovision. Um, so that, that's it for my quiz. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank you. I really and, um, thought I was going to triumph and then Yoni snaked the last minute. If you want me to send you the questions with the summaries as well, I can send that to you. That's yeah, really good. Do the quiz Thank yourselves. You. I'll learn all the um, I have all the info nicely typed up. Um, thank you, Eleanor, as well for joining. Um, hope you all have a nice Sunday. Um, stay you. inside, get your one walk in a day. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to end it now. Bye. Yeah.